Welcome back to another episode of Branching Out with FNM Bank. I'm your host, Mary Pavlovskaya, and I'm joined again by Renee Whitmore of Old Dominion Realty. Welcome back, Renee. Thanks for having me, Mary. Well, talking about the market and what real estate's going into in the next coming months or so, how many years of experience do you have again? So I've been selling real estate um, as a licensed agent for 16 years, and I worked as an assistant for two years prior to that. Wow, okay, so almost 18 years of real estate experience or being at least around on the real estate market. Mm -hmm. So you've gone through a couple of different seasons and you know the highs and the lows. Has this year been completely different from what you've normally seen? So like you mentioned, we've seen the highs and the lows. So when I first started selling real estate back in 2004, we were in the middle of that like ramping up of the real estate market. Mm -hmm. And then of course in 2007, eight and nine, we saw that major crash. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course we've been building back up from there. So yeah, I've seen it, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly basically. Um, the past year has been quite different as we know. Mm -hmm. um, it has been, you know, COVID times for sure are a lot <laughs> different than normal times. Mm -hmm. So what we've seen is um, where we would normally see kind of a cyclical market in mm -hmm. Virginia, it kind of follows our seasons. So winter, we tend to slow down, spring ends up being a, a, a big boomy market. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also, of course, have a slowdown at the end of summer, and then it kind of gets a little bit more um, activity in the fall and then kind of just starts that cycle back over again. What we saw last year um, as we kind of moved into um, knowing more about the coronavirus and COVID mm -hmm. and its impact on our, our um, economy is mm -hmm. that we really saw a major slowdown for a couple of weeks in the very beginning of what we would normally have as um, you know, a lot of activity mm -hmm. in our real estate market, the spring market. Um, and that's kind of what everybody waits for is that spring market. It's when everybody wants to like buy and sell houses and kind of move forward. And of course we saw a major pause at that point in mm -hmm. time. So our normal spring market was pushed um, to, you know, kind of summer, early summer, mm -hmm. midsummer. Um, and we just really have not seen a slowdown since that time. So it's almost like our spring market uh, took over the summer market and the fall market. And as we move into the winter market, um, kind of where we're at right now, um, we're not really seeing a huge slowdown. Um, of course, the holidays do get impacted with that. The weather might have a little impact if we see, you know, some snow and some ice and that sort of thing. Folks don't love to go out um, in bad weather. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we might see a little bit of a slowdown but I think that we're gonna be just as um, just as great as we move into mm -hmm. the spring market. I think we'll see um, things really kind of continue on. Um, like we talked about in the last episode about the, the supply and demand, mm -hmm. I don't see that our supply is gonna be you know, impacted hugely. We don't have any new major projects or things like that that are coming down the pipe that would you know, put a ton of uh, new houses in, mm -hmm. the, um, in the inventory. And I think we'll also continue to see that demand be there. So we're gonna still mm -hmm. have buyers in the market. So I don't know that we're gonna see a major shift um, mm -hmm. or downturn in our market anytime soon. I feel like we're still gonna see that appreciation. Um, of course, that also depends on where interest rates go. Um, currently, interest rates are extraordinarily low, mm -hmm. you know, sub three interest rates for most folks. Um, and that's just historical. I mean, everything's been historical lately. <laughs> right. um, but, you know, we, we definitely have seen um, these interest rates have impacted lending um, and our title, you know, agencies in a way that we've never seen before. So we have a lot of folks who are purchasing to take advantage of the real estate, um, the, the lower interest rates um, for mortgages. And then we're also seeing folks that are refinancing. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that, that refinance surge could potentially impact the number of houses we come have come on the market mm -hmm. because there's not going to be a lot of folks who refinance this year, maybe to do some repairs and that sort of thing to their house and then next year or the year after put their house on the market. Um, so we're seeing folks that are using that interest rate to fix up the house that they're in so they can stay there a little longer and make it what they, what they really found out that they needed as they were home more um, over the past year. Well, that makes sense. I mean, especially I know that our affiliated mortgage company, f and Mortgage, they have been double the volume of what they've had in the last year or so. So that only makes sense that a lot of times those low interest rates yeah. will drive people out to go and, and buy the houses. So hopefully that remains. But do you see if in the unfortunate event that our interest rates 
go back up, do you think that's going to impact just how many houses you've got on the market or how many people that are looking? Yes, that's a great question. Um, you know, I do think that if interest rates increase, that we may see a slowdown of you know, buyers that are looking to purchase. Mm -hmm. um, what that really does when the, the interest rate increases, it really has an impact on a buyer's uh, monthly payment. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, it's really important for folks to look at their monthly payment and kind of as they budget their household um, versus that overall purchase price. So if the uh, monthly payment that someone is looking at is a little bit higher because that monthly uh, or that mortgage interest rate has pushed them into a you know a different uh, monthly payment realm, mm -hmm. then it may be that they can't afford the house that they really would like to have. So it could have an impact for sure. And so more than likely, it'll be more houses getting less offers on the table and could possibly, sh do you see a shift in, in how many people are going out? And you know, right now it's just asking price, but will that offer go down a little bit lower if you've got less competition? It's really hard to say if, you know, what the impact will be. Um, and I think it really depends on, um, you know, where that interest rate goes. If it mm -hmm. stays pretty close, but just raises a little bit, I don't think we're gonna see a huge impact. Mm -hmm. But if you do see you know, a point or two increase in that interest rate, I think it will have an impact um, on the amount of folks that are looking to purchase um, and in which price ranges they are purchasing in as well. I know that's one of the advice I got when I was a first time buyer was make sure you're looking at your, your mortgage and the monthly payment you're making, not the total amount of the house. Um, so I think that's definitely going to be a huge driver for anyone who's either purchasing for the first time or deciding to upgrade from renting or whatever the whatever their choices are at the time. But. It's definitely easier for a buyer to think in terms of what their monthly budget looks like mm -hmm. versus a price of a house. Because um, you know you can look at the price overall price of a house can be very daunting to a, mm -hmm. a, a buyer, especially a first time home buyer. When you break it down to show them what their monthly payment is going to look like mm -hmm. from a perspective of their principal and interest as well as their taxes and insurance, mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit easier for them to understand how that impacts um, their their family's you know overall mm -hmm. monthly budget. Where their budget's at, yeah. yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm hoping that it sounds like this is a really good time to, if you want to buy a house, this would, this would be the time to do it with the low interest rates. But I'm hoping that kind of stays and we can keep the market moving um, Definitely. going out through the, the rest of the year. The interest rates are really important, but then also, um, you know, from a perspective of now being a great time to purchase, um, the home prices themselves, I don't see anything that's um, an indicator of the value depreciating over time. Mm -hmm. So if you're purchasing today at an interest rate that could be potentially sub sub three, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you wait for six months or a year, you may still have that same interest rate. Um, it could potentially be a little higher interest rate, but you could also have a higher purchase price as well. Mm -hmm. So um, if if folks are in um, the season of purchasing a home and they're really seeing um, that their budget allows for that to happen. Um, now is a better time than waiting in the future, for sure. That makes sense. Well, it's been lovely talking to you again, Renee. Thank you for all the information. I'm, I'm looking forward to see what the housing market does in the next couple of um, months into going to the rest of the year, but we appreciate having you. Thanks a lot, Mary. I appreciate you having me. Thanks. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Branching Out with FNM.